I survived 100 days inside of modded Skyblock. Now, the things we get up to and build in this 100 days get pretty crazy, so be sure to stick around to the end to see how we transform this tiny floating island into a thriving, beautiful sky base. But now, without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. So starting things out this time around in a void of nothing, we broke down the tree, immediately finding myself a sapling, and then began to dig up the bottom two layers of dirt to expand the island out a little before planting down said sapling and making myself a set of wooden tools. I'm telling you, we're moving quick in this one. Now after making my tools, I checked the quest book to see what I had to do next, and uh, well, I bagged myself a stone axe, and in the process found out that this mod also has the cobblestone digging thing from the previous modded 100 days. So I just sat and dug up a bit of cobble for a while, completing my quest and making myself a set of stone tools before I even used the wooden ones. It, it, honestly, it was, it was such a waste. Anyways, wastefulness aside, after I made my tools, I grabbed a little bit more cobble and made a generator that I'll probably never use considering that I can just dig it up from the floor. But hey, it's there if we ever need to use it, I guess. I, I don't know, it's kind of just the skyblock aesthetic to have a cobblestone generator. Now, I also found out that you can crouch near saplings to make them grow and, well, that's extremely useful because now I don't have to wait around wasting time doing nothing until they grow. So, I used my remaining cobble to make a furnace and smelted down a little bit of wood into charcoal for torches and then dug up a little bit more stone to expand out the island around the cobble gen because well doing that with wood would have ended really really badly and so after the expansion the first night fell upon our lonely little island so i just spent it growing and chopping trees and also gathering a little bit more stone as well as taking a good look through the quest book to get a better understanding of what to do along with completing a few quests and making a little bit more charcoal and so on the morning of day two, I've made myself a crook and got a better one from completing the quest for making one. I, I know, right? It makes no sense. Um, as well as a loot chest that contains some dark oak saplings. So uh, I'm glad that we can get some variety in the wood that we use already. I then grew a tree and hacked at its leaves with this here crook to try and get myself some silkworms that I actually ended up getting pretty quickly, completing a quest and bagging myself 32 cooked ones, as well as four spruce saplings. Not bad. Now, after that, I worked on completing the left side of this like little quest tree thingy right here by making a hammer, followed by eight more hammers to create this OP abomination giga chat of a hammer that I then used to bag myself some more random loot and boost some cobblestone with said hammer to create gravel to then get more saplings for my troubles. This time it's birch saplings aka the best one in the game, don't come at me. Then I did the same for sand and gravel and well just look at my inventory, it's already filled with everything. However, I do have 64 bone meal now, so uh, I was happy with that. Now, after dealing with all those quests, I made myself a chest and stored everything away before expanding out the island some more, adding a little blocked off area from the rest to use at night to farm mobs. And on the topic of night, by the time I was finished, it was night. So I sat and waited for mobs to spawn whilst chopping down a few trees, but after waiting and waiting and waiting, the sun began to rise with a grand total of zero mobs spawning throughout the night. Woo. And so on day three, I just grew and chopped down some trees and dug up some stone because I really need more building blocks if I want to expand out my island and make a mob farm soon. So yeah, a pretty boring gathering day. However, that night I did mess around with bone meal uh, and I grew some grass and got like a load of seeds that will come in handy later. But after dealing with the seeds, I just sat up all night again waiting for mobs to spawn. But uh, guess what? They never did. So on day four, I began work on a very simple layout of my island that I can expand upon later. Now, this may just look like a circle, and you may be thinking, hey, poppers, uh, you know, you've done circle builds, you've done square builds, this is going to look the same. No, okay, no, you probably know from the thumbnail that it's not, but e either way, this one's going to be a good one, okay? This one's going to look good. Now, I did actually manage to get quite a decent amount of the island done due to the ability to grow trees on demand, uh, and by the end of the day, we had about half of the circle finished, so I decided that was enough room for now, and called it a day for building, instead deciding to spend my time planting and growing trees that I then whacked with a crook to get some silkworms that I then placed again inside the trees to essentially kill them off and give me string. So I give the leaves a good beating and well, would you look at that? We have a lot of string and a bed now. So I put it to good use. And once I woke up on day five, I immediately made myself a string mesh and a sieve and then got to work on breaking down basically all of my cobble into gravel that I then proceeded to sieve through, finding all sorts of things. Now, this is going to be the main way to get ores and stuff because basically the better mesh we make, the better stuff we find but we've actually got to progress through them first using the ores that we find from previous meshes. It's very simple. So I upgraded to a flint mesh and now we can actually get some sort of ores. Oh, and whilst grabbing cobble, I used this OP method that allowed you to mine large areas of a specific block. So uh, yeah, another super, super useful thing. 
So after spending all day and night tediously sieving through gravel, and when I say tedious, I mean tedious. This thing takes so long. But by noon of the following day, I finally had enough iron to craft myself a new mesh. So I smelted it down and boom, iron mesh. So I placed that down and tested it out by finding our first diamonds as well as all of this other stuff. Not too bad for day six. So I decided to use up the rest of my gravel, finding a load more ores in the process. And then after dealing with all that, I went and completed all of the quests that I got over the previous day and finished off placing down the rest of the circle before heading to bed. And so I started off day seven by wasting my time breaking cobble down into dust and sieving through it in search of clay, but that's not how you do it. So once I realized my mistake, I made a barrel and then made an infinite water source using bone meal and then added both the water and the dust into the barrel to make clay. The once combined with bone meal gave me porcelain that I then made into a crucible, popped it in a furnace, and now we have a fired crucible. So I placed it down above some lava and added some cobblestone in there, and now whilst we're waiting for that to smelt down into lava itself, you know what time it is, it's time for the G Fuel plug baby, let's go! So last month was my birthday, and they were so kind enough to send me out a little care package of goodies. And in that care package is this month's flavor recommendation, Clickbait. Now, if you're familiar with G Fuel, you're probably already familiar with this flavor, but this is my first time trying it, and I gotta tell you, it is the bomb. I am obsessed with it. I really just cannot sing its praises enough. I love this flavor, and if you like fruity kind of sweet flavors, then you'll love it too. So by using my code, code POPPERS at checkout, you're going to save 10% off of everything site-wide. That's from tubs to shakers to even a freaking mini fridge. But anyways, that's it for the G Fuel plug today. 10% off, code POPPERS at checkout. Let's get back onto the video. Now, I just really spent the night waiting for the cobblestone to smelt down into lava and chopping down a few trees, as well as finding some netherwood saplings and sieving through some more gravel to get enough iron to make a bucket and then grab my lava. And now we have a renewable way to get it. Anyways, I spent the next morning gathering some spruce and oak wood that I then put to use over the following days by expanding out a few bridges to use for more islands later on. Now, this was actually so much easier and so much faster to get done compared to my previous 100 days because I can actually manually instant grow trees and bulk trees chop them down so it's just super super easy but back on track i finished everything off for now and spent the night sieving through more gravel in search of diamonds so that i could make a diamond mesh to find better items and so by the morning of day 10 i had amassed enough diamonds to craft my mesh so i did and then used my remaining gravel on it as well as some dust and then got to smelting down all of the goodies that i gathered from the previous sieving sessions and i also grew and broke some grass in search of cactus seeds to get more dirt that i'll explain later and so after running out of bone meal, I spent the night farming trees for sawdust that I then popped in the composter and turned it into dirt. Now, this is not a fast way of getting it, but it is still better than just farming out bone meal. And as well as this, I also sieved through some more gravel to find some diamonds. That way I can actually make what I'm planning to soon. Anyways, I eventually got a diamond as well as some cactus seeds. So I planted them down and immediately harvested and cooked the cacti and then went to bed. And on the morning of day 11, I made some green, red, and blue dye and then combined it in here with some stone to make a pedestal that I thought could make me generate infinite dirt, but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that and it only works for cobblestone. So that's kind of disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. So I got the new unintended cobblestone generator up and running and that thing will just run passively whilst we continue on progressing through life and all I have to do is click it to get the cobble from it. So that entire process is automated now. But once that was all out of the way, I also made some hoppers to try and somewhat automate my dirt processing. That way it could be a little bit more efficient. And I mean, to my surprise, it actually worked. Now, it's not full auto yet, but I, I guess it could possibly be soon. I don't know. Now with the grand whopping total of the six extra dirt I had, I added a little bit of an expansion to the island. Woo, that's a big progress right there. Then I spent the rest of the day farming and breaking down cobble into gravel in hopes of more iron. And by the way, I don't know if you could tell, but I absolutely love sieving through items and wasting my time just watching gravel go through a mesh. It's so fun and not boring at all. <laughs> Please make it stop. Now, the horrors of sieving aside, on day 12, things were going pretty good. So I started to look into what we could actually do to start growing blocks from the Botanica mod, I think it's called. And it just so happened that I had access to everything that I was going to need to get started. So I got to gathering and crafting everything I would need and then placing it all down and eventually making some dirt seeds that I then planted down in this pot right here and boom! renewable automatic dirt farm. Now, by the time I was done, the sun was already rising on day 13. So I put some of my wood to use and expanded out the island some more because why not? Now, I only actually managed to get one island added and filled in because, well, they were a lot bigger than I anticipated. 
But after finishing our singular island, I went back to check on the dirt and cobble production and well, that was going pretty well. Nothing too special, just, just a little bit. So I decided to grab some of the dirt essence and craft it into blocks and then go around placing it around the side of my main island before sorting out a little bit of my storage and then going to bed. And when I woke up on day 14, I had the burning urge to start a farm on my new island that I just spent half of the previous day filling in with wood, but eh, it's fine, it's just a minor delay. So I planted down another dirt seed, harvested the essence that I already had, and got to work on replacing the wood with dirt and water. Now, this is quite a big island, and I do not have that much dirt just yet, so uh, I did what I could for now, and I will work on the island passively to complete it. Anyways, I spent the night putting my obscene amount of cobblestone to use by breaking it down into gravel, and once again, sieving through it in search of more ores. Honestly, I cannot think of a better way to spend your nights. Alrighty, so for the next few days, I got to work on growing and chopping down as many trees as I could and then put all the wood to use by building out my remaining islands, or at least the outline of them because it was going to need doing at some point and well I can gather wood pretty quickly so why not just get it out of the way. But oh boy, let me tell you this was hella tedious, especially working with slabs because they'd sometimes auto place below and above the blocks. It was just annoying but I know that the end result's going to be worth it. And so after working tirelessly for a couple of days, all of the outlines of the islands were done and I spent the night of day 18 expanding out the farm a little bit and killing a few mobs as well as planting down our first seeds to actually make it a farm. And on the morning of day 19, I made myself a brand new shiny sieve but this time it's a heavy one that takes compressed gravel instead of normal gravel and well <laughs> just look at this <laughs> sieving became a hell of a lot more fun now this feels like cheating at this point but it is genuinely a feature and it's absolutely crazy so after sieving for a little while i began work on filling in an island with dirt to use as a tree farm so that we can actually get some greenery up in here because it's looking pretty dull right now and after placing down all the dirt i added a little crappy path over there just to help spread some grass and then tried to see if sandstone seeds were a thing but uh, they aren't but that's okay because i can get it pretty easy anyway now this may come as a surprise to you so prepare yourself because i spent the night sieving through gravel that, that's right i bet you didn't see that one coming and i also made some fern eye to try and keep up with the smelting of them because my efficiency had gone up quite a bit also at some point in the night i uh, heard an explosion and looked over to find my dirt island filled with everything imaginable including these night fellows who were just trying to clear the place up but i guess one of them really just had enough of dealing with everything and just decided to go bye bye straight off the edge and oh boy let me tell you this gravel's making that fate seem very very preferable anyways i paid no more attention to the island goers over there and just sipped my way through the night as well as making two blast furnaces and as the sun was rising on the morning of day 20 i watched all the mobs become nice and char -grilled discovering that there's some big boy zombies in this mod pack so that made me feel just so much safer now i guess i kind of understand why the guy did what he did last night I don't know, I, yeah, one look at this guy and he was he noped out after my morning entertainment i went and patched up the holes in the island dealing with the stragglers in the process and then went around placing torches so that that doesn't happen again then i decided to go and check on the progress of the grass spreading that was going about as well as expected so i made and planted down some coal seeds and proceeded to plant down and grow some trees over at the new island making things look a little bit nicer but still pretty damn bland because of the lack of of grass but hopefully that'll change soon then i placed down more dirt between the area of the central and outer island before once again spending the night sieving but this time it wasn't specific to gravel okay this time we did dirt and sand as well however i got into a fight with this op zombie right here and decided to actually go and get some sleep and so on day 21 i gathered a bunch of cobblestone from the pedestal crafted it into cobblestone bricks grabbed some dirt and began work on another island that i was going to make into a mob farm because i need quite a lot of mob drops to progress further in some of these mods so I worked on the farm all of day 21 and into day 22, when finally by the evening, it was all up and running. So I spent the night there just boofing mobs. I even ended up getting a little present containing a Curse of Bones book. I don't know what it does, but I have it. And by the morning of day 23, I had a pretty good amount of mob drops. So I started work on the next botanical kind of mod pack, which is one of my favorites, um, and made some funky bone meal to grow some flowers that I used the petals for to create this petal apothecary. And now we can make magical flowers that do things such as, you know, change one block into another block and all kinds of cool stuff like that. So I got to work on making a pure daisy that I needed a load of white petals for. So I crafted some more funky bone meal and farmed out white flowers until I finally had enough and added them all to the apothecary and boom, we now have a few pure daisies. So with those out of the way, I headed over to the farm and grabbed all of the pumpkins that are grown and crafted them into fell pumpkins that'll come into use later. Now, if you've seen the previous 100 days, you know why they're useful. Then I spent the rest of the night, well, you already know what I did for the rest of the night, okay? I sifted through some more gravel, but I did also add some more dirt to the farm. So I did 
should switch things up a little bit. Now, on the morning of day 24, I made myself a full set of iron armor so that I wasn't as defenseless as a wet paper towel, and then decided it was time to start work in a house, because I'm kind of sick of sleeping out in the rain. So I gathered a bunch of wood and headed over to one of the unused islands and began work on filling it in just to saw all the stuff from the main island over on there, then returned back to the main island and began work on my home. Now this one's a really cool looking house, okay? I don't think I've built anything really similar to this before. Uh, it's got multiple levels, it's kind of funky looking, it's really good. So if you want to build this house for yourself, go check out Ben Funkel. The tutorial will be linked down in the description and in the top right right now. And so, after a good few days of working on this house, straight up just doing nothing else except building this thing, um, it was finally done, and I think it came out looking pretty nice. So after working on the house for what felt like forever, I decided to spend day 33 making more fell pumpkins so that we can actually go to the nether soon. So I headed over to the mob farm to find it griefed by what I would assume was a creeper. So I patched it up and spent a while slashing up mobs until I had a decent amount of drops again and then headed back over to the farm to grab some more pumpkins that I then once again crafted into fell pumpkins. And after I was done with that, I uh, had to sift through a little bit more gravel to find some iron because I need to use it on these fell pumpkins to get the end result of a blaze. And once I had enough, I put it in the blast furnace and crafted myself a full set of tools and almost a full set of diamond armor, but I was just one short. But hey, I'll take three pieces over nothing. Then, once I decked myself out, I uh, grabbed my iron, crafted it into bars, and made a little blaze battle arena where I went and dispatched a bunch of them until I had enough blaze powder and went to craft my mesh, but apparently this time it's made from blaze rods, not powder. So that entire process was entirely useless. And in my disappointment, I decided to call it a day and head it to bed. On day 34, I had the big brain idea and used the fired crucible to smelt down cobblestone into lava and then just turn that lava into obsidian. I really have no clue why I didn't think of this sooner, considering we had the lava this entire time, but either way, I just sat and waited next to the crucible, topping it up with stone when needed, and then taking out the lava, making it into obby, and picking it back up. So I just continued the whole cycle until I had enough obby for an enchantment table and a portal, and then I went and built the portal underneath the stairs and went to bed. And on day 35, it was time to check out the nether. So I made a flint and steel, made a shield, lit the portal and headed in to find that there was absolutely nothing here. It's just void. Uh, but I mean, wh what else is there to be expected? It's, it's skyblock, really. So I built a little platform around the portal and headed back home. Woo! Nether trip is over. So I spent the rest of the day removing the mob farm. And once it was gone, I added a line of dirt to let grass spread over and then went to bed. And on day 36, I decided that I'd had enough of sieving for iron and instead decided to make myself some iron seeds that I didn't know existed until now. So I made the seeds and planted them down and boom, now we have an automatic way to get iron that I don't have to sieve through all night. Iron seeds out of the way, I spent the rest of the day placing down dirt to fill in the space between the islands and actually managed to get around half the actual total island filled in. And by nightfall, I was done with the dirt, so I harvested my iron and went to bed. Now, on the following few days, I added a bunch of seeds and crops to my farm and then made things look a little bit better by replacing the torches with lanterns and adding a few walls as well. And then also discovered grass seeds that, well, would you guess they turned dirt into grass? I don't know why I never even thought of attempting to use them earlier, but anyways. I broke down a bunch of cobble into sand and then crafted it into sandstone before placing a layer of it around each of the outer islands, as well as making an iron wand that made the whole placing of everything just so much easier. Oh, and I also trapped this zombie villager right here who may come in useful later, I, I don't know. But after the success of the previous days, I called things there and went to bed. And on day 42, I grabbed some flowers and a bunch of birch saplings and began planting them and chopping them down in search of a beehive because I want to make a bee farm and, well, I can't do that without bees. So after a while of deleting birch trees, I finally got a hive to spawn, so I bred the bees, added a little bit more dirt into the gaps and finally used my sugarcane seeds to grow some and planted it down over at the farm and then spent the rest of the evening just looking through the mods to see what I wanted to tackle next. Oh, and I also spent the night saving for diamonds because but why not? Now on day 43, the mod I decided to go with was the Botania mod, I think it is. I don't know, there's Botanica, Botania, I, I, I don't know. I get them all confused. It's another flower mod, okay? Woo. Uh, I bet you didn't see that coming. What a surprise. So I went over to breed my bees, but they weren't out just yet. So instead, I went and filled another island with dirt, which was so much easier with this wand. Then I popped down my pure daisies and got to work on making some living materials so that I can actually get started. Now, whilst actually waiting for the materials to change, I crafted myself some time in a bottle that was going to be super, super helpful for doing a lot of things. 
Then I grabbed my Batania blocks and bred my bees because they were out now, and then spent the night just casually farming out more living blocks, and whilst waiting for them to actually change, I used the wand to fill in more dirt between the islands that I actually ended up getting finished because it's all thanks to this wand. Honestly, they're so OP. But no thanks to this zombie that almost boofed me off. Other than that unkind fellow, I basically just spent the night farming out blocks. And on the following morning, I crafted myself a wand, mana pool, and mana spreader, and then proceeded to set it all up on the island. As well as crafting a bunch of endo flame flowers that I then placed down and linked to the mana spreader, gave them a bunch of coal, and boom, there we go, we've got a mana power source now. I'm sure I'm going to use that so, so much. And I also spent a little bit of time tending to the bee farm a little bit, breeding them and making a second hive. But after dealing with that, I made myself an auto sieve. Ooh, yeah, look at this, automation, so that things can just get done passively in the background and I need not worry. However, my happiness was short-lived when I found out really quickly that it needed a power source. So I know what I'm doing in the morning. So as soon as I woke on day 45, I immediately began work on a power source. Now, this whole process was hella confusing initially, and there was quite a bit of setup, with breaking down and sieving of blocks for materials, and making some water seeds, and filling in islands with stone and bricks, but eventually I had all the materials I needed and crafted all of the necessary items to begin making power. Then placing it all down, then breaking down iron and nickel into invar. This is a whole confusing process, okay? I told you, it's a long and tedious process to set up power. But eventually, after getting some invar ingots, I managed to make some other things for the mod pack, such as this magmatic dynamo and a bunch of pipes that I then set up straight from a lava generator. That way we've got the most efficient power possible currently. Also at this part, I owe a huge, huge shout out to Chosen Architect. Honestly, his series is so informative with this mod pack and none of this would be possible without him. Okay, so go check his channel out. Okay, very, very informative for all the mods. So I finally placed down a test out the auto sieve to find out that it now had power. Woo, we can finally use it. Well, not just yet, because I still need to check and craft a few more things, such as like a little mini storage area underneath the islands to store away all of this lovely, lovely ore that we're going to be getting from this bad boy. So eventually, after building up a room and piping everything up, I tested things out. And would you look at that? Everything works perfectly. Now, this took so, so long, but I'm pretty sure it's so worth it. Now, all I really need to do is just make more auto sieves, but that's a job for another day. We need to restock on mats first. So for now, I just made some pipe upgrades and called it a day. And for the following couple of days, I bred some more bees and gave them some more flowers, as well as also adding an automated way for me to get dust, sand, and gravel without really having to do anything for myself. So that's really, really useful for keeping my auto sieves up and running. And once I got those out of my way, I treated myself to a backpack and fully upgraded it. And that's just going to make moving things around so, so, so much easier. I mean, just look at the sheer size of this thing. But anyways, after all of that, I began work on making a big water circle around my house because I don't know, I like water features. I think they look cool. Now, this actually ended up taking me all night and through the next day. However, I think it looks pretty good, especially with all the glowstone that I got from saving dust and the walls and lanterns. But boom, here's our lovely little water ring. I think it looks quite nice. Now, on day 56, I went and grabbed a bunch of dirt essence, crafted it into dirt, and then added two layers of it around the outsides of all the islands because it just needed doing and I knew it would be quite a tedious job. So after placing dirt all day and deep into the night, a bunch of mobs started getting in the way. So I headed to bed and continued on in the morning, filling in more dirt and adding sandstone for all of day 57. Alrighty, day 58. I headed over to what I now call the mechanical island and grabbed all of the netherite scrap pieces that I got from sieving through gravel, crafted them all into ores and put them in the auto smelter. And whilst that was doing its thing, I made a smithing table, then combined all of the netherite scrap into ingots and also made myself a brand new shiny set of diamond armor and tools yes including a hoe then i turned them all into netherite because we're just balling now okay just look at the amount of netherite you end up with in this mod pack it is absolutely crazy i literally have over a stack this is the most netherite i have ever held okay this is the richest i've been in this game anyways back on track after decking myself out i headed over to the farm and harvested my sugar cane as well as grabbing some wheat because i could really do with some more bread then i crafted a bunch of bookshelves and used my remaining books to make an enchantment table that i just put in my backpack for now because i don't really have a place to place it down and then just headed to bed and once i woke up on day 59 i grabbed a bunch of stone from the auto smelter crafted it into bricks and headed into the nether to create a bigger platform for mobs to spawn on now once i finished that i headed straight back home and checked to see if i could make a netherite hammer and i could so i did what any logical person in my situation and bulk of netherite would do and made the real true giga chad hammer 
that I then put to work on a bunch of cobble because I really needed sand and my auto supply had run out. So once I was happy with the amount of sand I had, I threw it in the auto smelter overnight and on day 60, I put it to good use by making a giant bubble around the soon to be bee farm island because the little buggers kept flying off the island and well, I can't get them back because they get trapped underneath. It's just so annoying. However, by the morning of the following day, the bubble was done and looking pretty nice, although not 100% bubble-like. So I headed inside and got to work on really sprucing up the place. Well, not really considering that I used birch, but anyways, I made the interior of the beehive look really, really cozy with a nice birch circle, a ton of hives, a load of campfires, and by the morning of day 62, everything with it was done and it was looking really, really cozy. So after I was finished with the bee farm, I headed back over to my house and crafted a bunch of inferium seeds because well i'm gonna get that supremium armor this time so after crafting all the seeds i filled in another island but this time with spruce because i was planning on using it as a greenhouse island because well i want a better place to grow my plants after the island was filled in i headed to bed and on day 63 i started gathering all the materials i was gonna need for a greenhouse so i got to work on it and oh boy this thing was extremely annoying because at first I couldn't make my mind up with a design and, and just nothing was working for me. Things wouldn't line up symmetrically and everything. But eventually, eventually, things turned out pretty well and I continued on with a design that I was happy with and well I'm not gonna lie okay it's a square design I was wanting to do a circle but I am very very happy with how this build came out okay there was no tutorials involved with this one this was all poppers okay look at this thing it looks pretty nice now on day 70 I had a lot of the quartz glass left over from the greenhouse build so uh, I combined it with some glowstone dust to make it into illuminated glass and then went around placing it all the way around the circle of my home to brighten things up a little bit because even with all the lanterns that we have here there's still quite a lot of dark spots now after finishing off with the glass i messed around with our botanical island for a little bit but couldn't really get anything to come together so i headed to bed and on the morning of day 71 i made myself some marble and properly made the botanical island look good by adding a few paths and a circle around followed by flowers and water as well as a couple of gold accents and well i think this came out looking pretty clean now, I was done by the morning of day 72, so I just spent the rest of the day crafting as much Supremium as I could get my hands on, and then made some Inferium armor that I then upgraded to the Praduni Bidumini, I don't know, it begins with a P, and finally got one piece of Tertium. So, uh, all in all, some pretty good progress, but uh, now I do have to wait for some more Essence to grow. So, I headed to bed, and on the morning of day 73, I headed over to my lovely new botanical island and made myself some gold seeds, because, well, I never seem to have enough of the stuff. So I went and planted those down and crafted myself some cow bait and placed it down in hopes of getting a cow. And I really didn't have to wait long before one spawned in. So I went over and gave him a warm welcome before placing down more bait and repeating the process a couple of times until we had a decent amount of beef. That I then combined with some bones to get ourselves some wolf bait. So I set that down and, well, what do you know, we got our first puppy. Woo! A couple of baits later and we had ourselves a good amount of dogs. So I grabbed some name tags that I got from the quest book earlier and renamed all my doggos after you guys with the colors that you wanted. And so on screen now are the four of you that got dogs named after you in this video. And if you want a dog, a frog, or really anything else named after you, then drop a comment down below and who knows, maybe you'll be next. Anyways, I was done with the dogs by the morning of the next day, so I decided to go and replace all all of the wooden slabs surrounding the glass of the floor of my home island with actual plank blocks because they just could look kind of funky being slabs and i didn't really like it but after i'd finished replacing the wood i went and smelted down a little bit of cobble in the auto smelter as well as harvesting my sugar cane and store it away before heading to bed and then on the morning of day 75, I grabbed my stone, made it into bricks, and headed into the nether to make a pigman farm. Now, this is nothing special, it's really, really basic, and I have built one of these things before, and it works super, super well. And this time was no different, okay? This thing did not disappoint. So I grabbed my goodies from the chest, and as I was cooking my pork chops... I also crafted some more bookshelves for my enchantment table and then went to bed. And on the following day, I decided to go and replace all of the wood on this island with dirt and begin work on making a mage slash arcane tower to use as my enchanting room area thingy because I don't really build things like this and I also wanted a really cool place to put my enchantment table. Now, this tower actually did take me a while to build, mainly because I had to keep going up and down and up and down, but eventually the tower was done, so I added some details on the floor, and boom, enchantment tower is now finished and looking hella fresh if I do say so myself. So 
So after my previous very busy days spent slaving away at building the tower, I decided that on day 83, I was going to go and do something boring and easy. So I grabbed a bunch of sand, crafted it into sandstone, and got to work on making a little wall slash barrier, whatever you want to call it, all the way around my island to really make everything just be encased within itself, if you get what I mean. Now, this did take a lot of sandstone, but uh, I really like how it came out. But I wasn't done yet, because on day 85, I went over and grabbed all of the obscene amounts of glowstone dust that I had gathered from auto-saving through stuff, crafted them into glowstone, and then got to placing them all around the outside and near the wall, and, well, we ended up having everything finished off by the following morning. Then on day 87, I decided to take a break from doing builds for the rest of the day, and instead just went over to my greenhouse and harvested all my Inferium Essence that I just had uh, just a tiny bit of, uh, and then got back to work on making my Supremium gear. Now, this took a while just because of the sheer amount of things that I needed to combine, but uh, once I did, I finally had myself a full set of Supremium armor that I then went and tested on our little captive zombie friend right here, and, well, I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't tell whether it was worth it, but, hey, at least we have it now. On the morning of day 88, I went and enchanted all of my gear, as well as making a fresh set of netherite tools and enchanting them too. Now, I was really, really confused with this, so uh, I just got what I could and then left it at that because I really don't have time to be learning all the enchanting stuff right now. And instead, spent the rest of the day tidying up and organizing the tree island a little better because it was looking kind of crappy and, uh, well, I shall not stand for it any longer. But by the end of the day, the tree farm, I guess you can call it that, um, it was looking a decent amount nicer. Now, on day 89, I crafted myself a market to see what it had to offer me, but uh, when I placed it down, I almost suffocated the poor guy in a wall. But once he redeployed, I discovered that he was basically selling every single sapling under the sun. So I went and got myself some arcane dust and grabbed a bunch of cherry wood as well as just basically every other sapling this guy had to offer me. Now, I actually really wish that I knew about this guy sooner because I love funky trees in this game and if I can have them from like an earlier date, why would I not want that? Now, once I had enough trees to satisfy my addiction, I went to bed, and on the following day, I completely reverted all of the progress that I made in the tree island because they're basic, boring trees, and I wanted to use my new, shiny, modded, cool-looking trees because they're just way better in every single way. Now, after I'd finished off the specific tree island, I went and added some in the center between the center island and the outer islands to just fill things out a little bit more and add a load more color. Now, over the following couple of days, I really wanted to make an aquarium, so uh, I made a bunch of prismarine seeds, and whilst they were growing, I spent a day or so just organizing my storage because, well, it was already somewhat organized, but I haven't really been keeping up with it. And once the drawers were organized, I made a bunch of prismarine and got started on the aquarium. Now, when I started work on this thing, I really had no idea how I wanted this thing to come out. So uh, I just kind of winged it, but I'm really glad with how it came out. It looks very, well, aquarium-y, I guess. And also, fish spawn naturally in here, so that's a lot less work for me. Anyways, I was really happy with the aquarium, but it didn't feel finished just yet. So, on the morning of day 98, I waterlogged my sieve and scavenged through some sand to find some coral seeds and then made some seawater, put them in there to make some actual coral blocks. Now, this process actually takes quite a while due to the fact that I actually have to wait for the water to change into seawater, but... Either way, I managed to get all the coral into block form and placed it down, finally finishing off the aquarium. Now, on day 99, I woke up and gathered all my doggos to come into the house, then spent a little bit of time trying to make the mechanical island look a bit better, because it was the only one that was unsightly and never had a glow up. And if I'm being completely honest with you, okay, the structure I built on this island was not good, but I was hella tired when recording these last couple of days, so I'm going to cut myself some slack with this. Now, after I finished building that horrendous structure, I headed to bed, and on day 100, I traded for some bone meal and went around just adding grass and flowers everywhere, just some final touches and details, as well as replacing all of the nether trees on top of my house with cherry ones because they just look so much nicer. After that, I added a little bit more glass onto the floor of my home, said goodbye to my doggos, and stumbled across two intruders that I swiftly dealt with. But now it was time for the sun to set on the final day of this 100 days. So I headed to the top of my house and just watched it go down. But there you have it, 100 days in modded Skyblock. Now, I really do hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you did, then please consider dropping a like and subscribing because it is greatly, greatly appreciated and it really does go a long way. 
And I'd also just like to take a minute to thank you all so, so, so much for all the support and making it possible for me to make these videos. It's really just a dream come true and I can't thank you all enough. I really, really, really appreciate you all more than anything. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But for now, that's it from me today. Thank you all so much for stopping by. I hope you all have an amazing day and I'll see you all again very soon with one of the three videos that I'm currently working on. Bye-bye, peeps.